In the opening scene, we see the first king of Aurea leading his knights to launch an attack against a monstrous dragon. They reach inside the dragon cave, but are soon overpowered by the beast. The formidable creature kills all the men one after another, leaving the king at the dragon's mercy. The scene then fast forwards to several centuries later, showing an impoverished kingdom surrounded by harsh and barren lands. The two princesses of the kingdom, Elodie and Floria, do everything they can to help their people, including collecting firewood and supplies. One day, a priestess visits them with a marriage proposal for the elder princess, Elodie. Turns out that Queen Isabel of Aurea is looking for a suitable bride for her son, Prince Henry. Elodie's father, Lord Bayford, is more than happy with the proposal and urges his daughter to accept it. Elodie is initially reluctant, but she eventually agrees for the good of her people. The very next day, the family of four make their way to Aurea Kingdom in order to further discuss the marriage. After several hours of journey, they finally arrive at their destination. The family is awestruck by the ambience of the kingdom, as the castle is surrounded by a breathtaking view of greenery. Upon arrival, they are welcomed by a palace guard, who leads them to their rooms. They are asked to wait for some time, as the royal family are in the middle of a prayer. While waiting in her lavish room, Elodie notices another woman from the balcony, and the two simply exchange smiles. The following morning, Elodie is presented in front of Queen Isabel and Prince Henry. After a brief introduction, the Queen and Lord Bayford go for a private confer, while Elodie and Henry are left alone in order to get to know each other. Elodie starts the conversation, asking if he's happy with the marriage, to which he affirms. When he asks about her, she tells him the truth, that she agreed for the sake of her kingdom's people. Her heart belongs to Mike, after all. As they go on conversing, they quickly bond over some common desires, such as traveling around the world. Ah, like any good Tinder conversation. They soon go for a horse ride, and Henry shows her some beautiful scenery around the kingdom. Meanwhile, Lord Bayford walks out of the room after a private conversation, but he now has a tensed expression on his face. Lady Bayford asks him if everything is fine, but he doesn't share anything with her. She then goes to talk to Queen Isabel, intending to befriend her, but the latter addresses her in a rude manner. Upset and sensing something amiss, Lady Bayford goes to Elodie's room at night and tries to convince her to end the marriage. She emphasizes that something is wrong with the Aurea family and that they are not to be trusted. However, Elodie perceives Henry as a nice guy and refuses to listen to her stepmother. The wedding takes place the very next day, and the Queen formally announces Elodie as the new princess of the kingdom. After the ceremony, the newlyweds head to the top of a mountain to perform an ancient ritual, which Henry explains is the way to pay homage to their ancestors. Upon arriving there, Elodie finds the queen dressed as a red priestess. She hands Elodie a coin and leads the newlyweds to the altar. She then recounts the story of how the kingdom of Aurea was born. When their ancestors first came here, they found that a monstrous creature also inhabited the land. The creature, being a savage bloodlust, destroyed the entire village. So, the king gathered his soldiers to avenge his people. However, However, they proved no match against the beast, and as a result, the king had to sacrifice his three daughters for peace in the kingdom. Since then, this ritual has been carried out to ensure peace and safety in the future. Isabel then cuts the palms of the newlyweds and holds them together, announcing Elodie as royal blood. To complete the ceremony, Elodie throws the earlier coin into the chasm. Following this, Harry carries her in a bridal style and starts walking towards the exit. Oh, I pulled a hammy, milady. But as they cross the narrow path, he unexpectedly unexpectedly throws Elodie into the chasm, causing her to tumble into several tree branches before hitting the surface. After a while, she regains her consciousness and finds herself in a deep, dark cave. She soon notices lots of jewelry and pieces of clothing belonging to other princesses, which makes her realize that she is also one of the sacrifices, like them. Not long after, she hears a fluttering sound nearby and walks towards it. Elodie finds a little bird caught on fire and proceeds to help it, but just then, a huge flock of fiery birds flies across her, and she soon approached by the monstrous dragon. The beast says it smells the scent of royal blood coming from Elodie, making the latter realize that it's Henry's blood mixed with hers. The dragon then launches its fire towards Elodie, prompting her to run away desperately for her life. During her escape, she comes across the dead body of the same woman with whom she exchanged smiles earlier, indicating that she was also one of the victims. However, Elodie has no time to react and continues running deeper into the cave. She somehow manages to outrun the dragon's flame by climbing into 
into a small hole, but unfortunately burns her leg in the process. Despite the excruciating pain, Elodie wraps up her wound with a piece of cloth and uses an accessory as a light to find her way out. She crawls through a narrow path and ends up in an illuminated cave filled with glowing slugs. She slowly approaches it, but she's stopped by a deep, pit in between. In a brave move, Elodie takes a long leap to the other side. She manages to reach it, but the tilted and slippery surface causes her to slowly slip down. Luckily, her dress's accessory gets caught between the stones, preventing her from falling. She then uses a sharp object from her corset to climb up. After this, Elodie gathers a handful of glowing slugs and uses them as a light source to continue on her way. Happy to help me, lady. She soon comes across a puddle of water and proceeds to drink it, but finds that it's dirty. In order to quench her thirst, Elodie then starts catching the droplets of water falling from the ice shards above. Shortly after, the ice begins to melt faster as the fiery dragon shows up. Upon witnessing this, Elodie immediately escapes, narrowly evading the dragon's fire. She continues running until she reaches a chamber with a note, safe here, she cannot reach. I've played enough Souls games to know that this is a troll. As Elodie looks around the chamber, she finds the names of several other women sacrificed before her. After a while, she eventually finds falls asleep due to extreme fatigue. When Elodie wakes up, she freaks out upon seeing the glowing slugs attached to her leg wound. Yum, yum, lady. She hurriedly takes them off, only to learn that her wound has miraculously healed. This makes her realize that these slugs are actually capable of healing. Following this, Elodie gets up to find a map carved into the wall and studies it before continuing on her way. She takes the path mentioned on the map and reaches a vertical tunnel made up of crystals. She also finds a crown belonging to another princess and speculates that she used the same way. Believing that she's close to the exit, she climbs up through the crystals and ultimately makes it to an opening. However, her happiness is short-lived because the opening is a dead end at a high vertical drop on the mountainside. This makes her break down in tears as she realizes that her end is near. But just then, she notices some people at a far distance giving her a sense of hope. Elodie then screams at the top of her lungs to get their attention, but it only attracts the dragon. The monster then approaches her and is about to spit fire, but suddenly, they hear some men screaming Elodie's name. She follows the voices and soon comes across a grim sight, the remains of three baby dragons. At this point, she realizes that Isabel's story was a lie and that the first king mercilessly killed the baby dragons for no apparent reason. As a result, the mother dragon decided to avenge her baby's death. Elodie continues to follow the voice and spots her father along with some of his men who have come to rescue her. But before she can reach him, the rescue party is ambushed by the dragon. It mercilessly kills them one after another before leaving. Elodie then runs to her dying father, who apologizes for his wrong decision. In his final breath, he tells her about the exit, as well as the ship in which her stepmother and Floria are waiting for her. Elodie is devastated at the demise of her father, but she doesn't have any time to waste, so she uses a rope to climb her way up to the mountain's exit. During this, the dragon spots her and immediately charges towards her, releasing fire, but Elodie narrowly escapes the flame and finally runs from the mountain. She then takes one of the rescue party's horses and heads away from the mountain. When the dragon continues pursuing her, she abandons the horse and hides under a rock. The unsuccessful chase infuriates the dragon, so she ends up burning down the entire surrounding area. Isabel notices the commotion from the palace and realizes that Elodie's sacrifice has failed. As a result, she goes to Bayford's ship and captures Floria, resorting to using her as a replacement. When Lady Bayford tries to intervene, the queen has her henchmen stab her, leaving her severely wounded. But despite the immense pain, Lady Bayford somehow heads towards the mountain. After meeting Elodie, she reveals everything that happened on the ship. This enrages the princess, so she decides to rescue her sister and take revenge. Meanwhile, at the altar, Isabel asks for her son's hand to patch her blood with Florius. The prince refuses to comply, asserting that she's just a child. However, the ruthless queen cuts her own hand and patches up with Floria before throwing the girl into the chasm. By the time Elodie arrives, it's too late, but she finds no one there. Realizing that her sister is already thrown down, Elodie bravely decides to rescue her at any cost. She uses a rope to make her way down to the chasm, where she sets up a booby trap 
trap to divert the dragon. She then heads towards the place where she saw the remains of the babies earlier, while grabbing her father's sword on the way. Upon arriving there, Elodie triggers the trap, emanating a clanging sound. This diverts the dragon's attention, and she uses the opportunity to get to her sister. But before they can escape, they hear the dragon returning. Now that they have nowhere to go, Elodie tells her sister to hide, while she herself decides to confront the dragon. Upon coming face to face with the beast, Elodie tries to explain the truth, that the girls she was killing weren't the daughters of Oria, but instead random daughters from another kingdom. However, the dragon doesn't believe it and attacks her. Amidst the fierce battle between the two, Elodie manages to stab the dragon's eyes and injure one of her limbs. She then comes up with an idea to deliver a final blow. She stands in front of a C-shaped wall and challenges her to release fire. As the dragon does so, the flame strikes the wall and rebounds back, ultimately burning herself. Now that the beast is down, Elodie reveals a cut on her palm and explains how they were made royal. This finally makes the dragon realize that she's been deceived. So she requests to be ended. However, Elodie isn't cruel like Isabel and doesn't want to harm the creature. She instead heals her wounds using glowing slugs. Oh yeah, give me the dragons. In the aftermath, Elodie returns to the palace to crash the third wedding and stop the evil royals from sacrificing yet another innocent woman. After exposing the Orient's treachery, she advises the new bride and her family to flee. Soon after, the dragon shows up and burns the entire palace along with all the Orient royals and nobles inside. The movie ends with Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford sailing back home, loaded with supplies and accompanied by the dragon. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.